I originally was just going to do a video on uh, how to clean rollers and brushes. A lot of people may or may not know that. I, I do a lot of painting for apartments and rental units, that sort of thing. And painting is one of the easiest, quickest, cheapest ways to freshen up a, a unit or a house. And there's definitely a way to go about it. And my experience has been that most people don't know how to do it. And I thought I'd share my experience with you um, on how to do it quick and do a fast cleanup and, and just get the job done. So let's begin. All right, before we even get started, let, let's talk about paint. Uh, when I deal with uh, property owners and managers, they're only interested in the, the bottom dollar. What did this project cost me? And when it comes to paint, that's a terrible philosophy. What I like to do is I don't like to use oops paint. I use oops paint a great deal. But oops paint is when you go into the store and you give them a, a color chart and they mix it for you and then it doesn't come out quite right. One of the pigments uh, wasn't right and it, it just or it didn't look proper underneath that lighting or and you decided not to purchase it. That's an oops paint. And you'll go to the section and you'll ask them, you know, what about your oops paints? And it's a good deal cheaper. So property owners and managers will uh, go there quite frequently and buy that paint thinking that they're getting a, a great deep discount. All that is true up until the point of maintenance, regular maintenance. When somebody moves out and you have to touch up just one wall because it got scratched by a sofa or a bed moving, that's when you want, you know, really just a, a, a yellow or a taupe or a, a beige throughout the whole, whole house. And then you can just paint, you know, where it's needed you know, or one whole wall without having to paint all four walls. That's why I believe really in just buying large quantities of one type of paint for all of your rental units. It's much, much cheaper, much cheaper in the long run. I also like using exterior paints on the interior walls because it's, it has more of a plastic in it that allows to be washed a, a wipeable wall. It wears a lot harder than an interior. I also like latex paints because of its ease of cleanup. If you spill it on something, you can just take a wet rag and, and get it off of whatever it touched and off of your brushes and everything else. Uh, unless there's a stain, a child used a magic marker or something of that nature, then I very much like to use an oil-based primer. Okay. Let's move on to mixing paint. Mixing paint is very important. <clears throat> and when you're done, try to keep very good control of your containers. Keep the tops wiped down. And when you're done with them, rinse them out so that when you do get a, a bucket that was destroyed or a lid that was destroyed, you can transfer it into that, that container. Um, you want to have one of these for the gallon size buckets and it fits on a drill and go slow and just slowly go like this and you will mix the contents super well much better than a stirring stick when you're dealing in five gallon buckets <coughs> use a heavier uh, paddle i also use this for mixing plaster for doing uh, sheetrock repairs but this works great for paint also <coughs> Probably you're going to need a little bit heavier duty drill when you're mixing five gallons of plaster. So just something to keep in mind. You don't ever want to work directly out of your paint container, the gallon container or the five gallon. You want to pour it into something. And this is for rollers. And it has a special plastic, uh, special coating on this plastic that allows it to uh, clean easier. But if you take a scouring pad, you're gonna wear that off and make ridges and it's gonna be harder and harder to clean. So try to keep it, you know, when you're working outside and the sun's baking it, you, you're, you don't have a lot of uh, luck with that, but try to rinse it out quite frequently as you're progressing. I very much like these handy buckets. 
they have an adjustable strap on the bottom for the size of your hand. They have a earth, rare earth magnet to hold your, your brush. Uh, there's plastic liners that slide out of here. I've abused this one so badly, but you buy new ones of these. Don't ever pour your paint in this. I lent this to somebody. <laughs> um, so you can buy new liners or don't feel like, well, Gene, look how terrible that is. When the paint is dry, I, I live in the tropics, if you're not on top of this and you're, you know, rinsing this immediately, it starts drying fast. You can either try to peel it out, but just set it aside, let it dry, and you can use this over and over again. And when you're on a ladder or you're cutting in trim, you, you can't beat these buckets. Handy buckets. As far as paintbrushes, you know, people say, we'll go to you know, big lots and buy the cheapest brush possible. I have done that. Purdy are fantastic brushes. They last a very long time. But more importantly than a cheap brush, it flows off the bristles so much better. And I try not to really mix my brushes. If one's an oil, I leave it as an oil brush. If one's a latex brush, I leave it as a latex brush because of the solvents that I use to clean it. Uh, I really try to stick with latex unless, like I said, there are heavy stains or tremendous wear items. Um, as far as rollers go, now these I don't mind buying cheap, but I have a couple of criteria. I like to have a plastic liner and the nap of the roller it depends on, I usually go with a medium nap, but if I'm doing like a popcorn ceiling or something of that nature and I'm afraid of destroying it, if I can't spray the ceiling, I like to have a, a thick nappy roller. I also like cigar rollers. I can really get in close after I cut in with a brush with a cigar roller, then move to get most of the wall with this, and then uh, trim out and everything else with, with brushes. A fast paint job requires a fast cleanup and a cleanup means you have the proper tools to clean uh, your, your tools. You need absolutely these three items right off the bat besides a hose with a uh, nozzle on it. Let's start with this one. This is a painter's knife and it fits exactly your rollers and you use that to get the excess paint off of your roller. This is probably past its life, but this is used to comb out the paint and after you spin it and to get the dry paint off of the brush, very necessary. And you cannot live without this. This is a spinner tool and it's about 15 to 20 dollars and after you've washed the brush, I'm, I'm going to show you how to use these, but I'm just introducing it to you right now. It spins. And it also spins a roller. Alright. Let me show you how I get started painting. I primarily use three types of uh, instruments when I paint. I use cigar rollers, larger rollers, and brushes. Before I get started, I always wet them and then spin them out so that uh, they'll take paint fresh on the bristles or the hair. Let me show you. Using warm water, I just wet my brush and then I spin it out. And then to get the hair back in line, I just comb it out a tad bit. Now that is ready to start cutting and trim on your wall. Again using warm water, I wet my roller. I normally do this in a five gallon bucket outside, but just for ease, now I'm going to get that water off. is ready to take paint.
you will save a great deal of time and setup with tarps and wrapping chandeliers in plastic and uh, if you prep your room fast and carefully then you can get right to the work of painting the walls and the ceiling and having these kind of items this is a hallway runner uh, you also want 12 foot or 10 foot or 8 by 8 foot tarps for the center of rooms you want to be able to drape over tables and couches if you can't move them out of the place but I really like if, if at all possible to have an empty room and then I run through it I don't find sprayers quicker I, I don't even like them um, they're they're bad for your health they're the mist is so fine that it gets in the air and can travel a great distance with a wind and spray cars. Cleanup takes a great deal longer. You can be very quick cutting in with a brush, start at the top and work your way down uh, with brush and roller. That's my experience. I, I would much rather see a cleaner job with a brush and a roller than with a commercial spray rig. A lot of people are going to argue at this point done this a lot, done it both ways. Uh, roller and brush goes really quick. I use many different size brushes to do what I'm trying to accomplish at that moment. Uh, I use seldom if ever painter's tape. I, I don't tape everything off. I cut in by pushing it up into a corner and just gently shaking it. That's exaggerated but to give you the idea and let those brush hairs just flare out and uh, fill in that gap and by having a, a good amount of paint flowing off of that brush, keep dipping it, uh, you'll, have a, you'll have a very good cut line and then roll into that cut line. You always want to keep your edge wet and you'll be able to go so much faster than the guy that's trying to tape it off. When he pulls off the tape you know, he's not going to have a very good line either. Um, there's a lot of tricks. Maybe I'll, I'll show you how to paint a room uh, doing that another time. This, this originally was just how to, how to clean a brush and a roller. But then I was thinking, well, I'll show you some other things. But you do not have to be taping off everything when you're going into a room. And it'll look really good when you're done. By the way, this is the type of roller that a cigar roller uses and you should definitely have a couple of these. These will get into areas that the larger roller can't and you'll have better control with this type of a roller. This is probably the most handiest size ladder for doing interior work. It's a four foot ladder. Um, I would not get an eight foot. If, if I was going to get anything other than a four foot, I would get a six foot ladder because you don't Four foot is, is the most convenient size for working inside a house. If you have high vaulted ceilings, you're going to be using different ladders anyhow. A uh, quick way to uh, estimate how large your ladder is, is just count the spaces. Each one's roughly a foot. So one, two, three, four feet. This is a four foot ladder. This is how I wash my brushes and they'll last a long, long time if you do this. Normally, I'm out in the field and I'm again using a garden hose. The wife can throw a fit if you do this inside the house, but I do it there too. <laughs> this is how I wash them. I usually just use cold water because, again, I'm using a hose, but if, if you can, warm water or warm soapy water and just kind of get the paint out of the bristles. Okay? Then taking the comb, comb the brush out a little bit. This of course is with a latex paint. Okay. Then using your wire brush, go ahead and get it off of the metal part and the wood if you got any up there. And if it's dried on the brush bristles, go ahead and use the brass wire on the hair. Then taking your spinner, put it in the center, and 
spin it out. Okay? That, again, back to almost brand new state. Throw it back into line. Wash this off before the wife sees it. And don't lose this. This is part of the brush. This uh, case. Put it back together. It keeps the hair in line, keeps the dust off of it, and it's instantaneously ready for another use. If you're doing a large job and you don't want to go through the process of cleaning everything out, okay, I, I do this quite a bit. I'm, I'm not a fan of this idea, but I do do it a lot. I take a uh, Walmart bag or one of those plastic grocery bags, wrap my brushes in it, I wrap my rollers in it, and I'll put it in the refrigerator overnight and it's ready to go instantaneously for the next morning. But if you got the time and you're not exhausted, go ahead and wash everything out. Your equipment will last a good deal longer. Let me show you how I wash my rollers out. Now rollers, I really do like to clean outside. First thing I do is I take that tool I showed you and I milk off the excess paint. Stick it on my spinner. Okay. Now this is where you really need a five gallon bucket and a garden hose. And then using the spinner, dry it out. You ready for the next use? All right, the last tip I have is if you transfer your paint into an empty container, mark it, date it, and if you have specific houses, uh, write on a piece of paper whose house it is and where, what rooms, etc., etc. Uh, make sure you clean out your groove really well. That's the number one spoiler. Put your lid on. Take a cloth so that if you don't have something, it won't splatter. Use a rubber mallet and tap around it. By having the proper tools, uh, painting is very inexpensive other than the cost of the paint because you don't have to keep buying cheap brushes like everybody else is doing. You don't have to keep going out and buying rollers like everyone else does. And you have all of these things handy so that when you do have a paint job, you're ready to just bust it out. Just some tips and tricks that I use for painting. I'll catch you on the next one.